so hey guys I'm back again it's only probably been about 12 or 10 minutes since I made my last video but I'm gonna make another one so this is kind of a vloggy video to talk about something that kind of uncomfortable to talk about but it'll probably help you guys understand me a little bit better so this vlog is going to center around borderline personality disorder, BPD, and what I'm like on it. Because I don't always fit 100% of the symptoms, but I'm going to tell you what pieces of BPD I have. And I did have an official diagnosis, by the way. I've suspected it for about four or five years now and about a month or less ago I was diagnosed. Now, let's go ahead and talk about common misconceptions. When I say BPD, some doctors have literally thought I meant bipolar disorder. No, bipolar disorder is not categorized like that. Other people think borderline personality disorder. That sounds like you're talking about multiple personalities. No. Nope. So, I'm not bipolar, it's not bipolar disorder, and I don't have multiple personalities. What it is, is a type of mood disorder. I have, ever since I was a little child, been very sensitive and had mood swings a lot. Um, blame it on PMS, blame it on being spoiled rotten as a kid, blame it on what you want, um, but those things have always been there. And I didn't look at them as any type of, I guess, disorder or disability or anything, but further down the road, obviously, they became what is part of this disability. Um, the interesting thing, well, two interesting things about this uh, disorder is that you cannot be diagnosed until you are 18 or older, even if you might have had it your whole life. Another interesting thing is is that most cases are not outside of the United States. Like, a lot of people don't believe that this disorder exists, but obviously I do. Um, I'm not the only one I know with this uh, disorder. I know two other people with this disorder, and the one has always been able to understand me on a level that nobody else um, could and I just thought it was because he was an amazing friend, and he is. However, it's also because he has this disability, disorder, whatever, and understands the emotional impact of it. So, what you really need to know is, in a really weird aspect, we're like superheroes, or people with superhuman powers. Um, a normal person has a very limited amount of emotion, whereas people with borderline personality disorder are so sensitive and feel so deeply, it's literally like 10 to 50 times the amount of what a normal person feels. And the reason this is, is, all right, let's say you're upset with your friend, all right? You're upset with them. You're thinking about the situation that you're upset about, okay? That's all you're focusing on, whatever eventually it'll be solved or you'll be done, right? Borderline personality disorder person. They're upset with a friend over a situation. They're hurting over their, like, emotions and their hurt are being pulled from every single time that that person has hurt them or they have been in a situation that have hurt them in regard to that person. Like, they may not be consciously thinking about every single time they were hurt, but that emotion is building up. Like, they are feeling all of that emotion at once. They are not able to separate. They are feeling all of that at once. So, a good example for me is um, with my divorce and the stuff that happened in Iowa, because you all know by going through my YouTube that I've been in Iowa. I have not really talked in detail about the situation. I'm not really going to. But, um... There's a person involved with me that I did forgive for everything that they did during that situation. Everything. Um, but anytime I would get upset with them, 
about something entirely different, all of that would compound. And believe me, it was the biggest, most painful time of my entire life. So I was able to not get along with them for the longest time because I just could not deal with that. And it's still hard to this day to like not compound all that on them and feel betrayed every single time. But that is a common thing that happens pretty much any time you feel on borderline personality disorder, pretty much every time. Actually, as somebody who's a Christian or somebody who believes in forgiveness and stuff, for a borderline personality person to let go of something huge, like actually let go of it, that's actually like a huge thing for them. Like, I'm not trying to brag, I'm not trying to sound like we're super amazing, but given the type of emotion they feel and the amount of hurt that they feel, like that is a monumental thing, monumental for them. So I didn't know that at first, so it made me feel happy that I had let something extremely huge and painful in my life go because bitterness for a BPD person goes so much deeper. Holy crap. Um, another thing that you should know is one of the ways to diagnose BPD is um, they've had some kind of abuse as a child in their life. That's usually how it's triggered. And for me, it was an alcoholic father who was very abusive to my mother. Um, I don't like to talk about this because I don't like to put information about my family online a whole lot because I don't want anybody messing with him or anything. But, yeah. The truth is, is that he was pretty abusive. Not physically. All right, not physically all the time. Very rarely physically. Emotionally, mentally. Oh, my gosh. He was way more physical to my mom than he ever was to me. But... Plus, another part that you could um, use on that is that I was bullied, and I'm still bullied, just for being a real weird person. Um, bullied all the time as a kid, because I like to make believe, I like to imagine, I like to dress up in costumes, I like to carry my stuffed animals around. Guess what? I'm 29 years old. I still do it. Has not changed. So, I've taken a lot of emotional abuse over the years. Another interesting thing that a lot of BPD people do and that I'm pretty much decided to do is because of these emotional attachments, because they feel so strongly and they get hurt so much, it's hard for a loved one to be able to ever match up to their standards. Like they're so sensitive about everything that most BPD people um, swear off relationships so that they don't hurt themselves and don't hurt the people around them because our expectations are so high that a person only the person of the utmost kindness and utmost um, sensitivity is going to be able to handle us. And it's still going to be very, very rough for them. So um, it's pretty much easier to swear off relationships. That's what I'm doing unless somebody incredible comes along because I'm tired of hurting myself and I'm tired of hurting other people. You know, I would love to live a life just full of my friends and people I care about and stuff and not have to attach anything else to that because all of us are going to feel a whole lot better if I'm not being an ass. I may not even be able to help it, but it's still the truth. So, Another, um, I'm not sure how rare it is type of thing, is that we definitely have um, hallucinations. Then you'd like think, oh, schizophrenia? No, I actually thought I had schizoaffective disorder, which is not schizophrenia. It's like depression mixed with um, some schizophrenic tendencies, but I don't. I have BPD. Um, a lot of people that have BPD do tend to hallucinate um, with me. I can feel bugs all over me. I see bugs. I've hallucinated my cat. I've hallucinated mice. And I can legitimately hallucinate things outside my window. Like I can Jack or Jeff the Killer, see him out of my window sometimes. When I was really upset and scared over Slender Man, I could see him a lot. I would hallucinate the Grudge Lady. It's it's ridiculous. The good thing for me is is that they are always stationary. I mean, they're always staring at you, but they're stationary, like they're not coming at my face or anything. And if I work hard enough, I can make them go away. Like with a bug when it's on me, I just stare at it and I go, you're not real, you're not real, you're not real, and eventually it'll, it'll go away. So, I don't know if I'm going to lose a ton of subscribers by talking about this, but it's something that is really important for me to discuss and Anybody else who's struggling with this, I'd love to talk with you. I'd love to be your friend. I'd love to be a support for you. 
because sometimes the only people that really truly understand how we feel are other people with BPD. Um, but the most common misconception is, is that we would be good relationship material. No. Most likely we'd, we would probably all trigger one another. Unless your BPD worked in a very different way from the other person's and you could make it fit together, maybe. But honestly, we all just make good friends for one another. Um, what else was I going to bring up in regards to that? Oh, um, I've got a double whammy. With pe both people with Asperger's and people with BPD, um, you talk to them once or they think fondly of you, you're their friend. Like, you may not feel that way, that you have, may not have built an emotional attachment to them at all, but they say you they see you as a friend, like, instantly. And I've had this problem and gotten hurt so many times where I thought a person was my friend and you know, I really cared about them and everything and they didn't even, they didn't even, like, think that way at all, so. Emotional sensitivity sucks. Um, so I have to be careful who I regard as my friends, who I say are my friends, because they may not think of me that way. Like, there's YouTubers I talk to online that I absolutely adore. Totally idolize them. Think of them as friends, but they may not think of me that way. So. It's a double-edged sword, really. You get to feel really deep connections, but they may not always be... The other person may not always be connected in that way. It's lovely when it is, though. So lovely. Um, what else? Um, the suicide rate is pretty high. Like, our actual um, living rate is pretty is pretty low because a lot of people are so sensitive and, and have to deal with this on such a hard level that they commit suicide. And I'm going to admit, I've been there. Actually, I've been there pretty recently. Um, as you know, I've, I've self-harmed, too. So... It is hard. That's why a lot of people are on mood stabilizers for this, and it's not recommended that you not be. But I'm off mine right now because they, once they settled in, they were making me violent and irritable, and I was hurting people around me, so I went off them because if you don't find the correct mood stabilizer for you, bad stuff can happen. Um, it's looking like I'm going to have to go on lithium, which lithium tends to kill almost all emotion, so... I'm going to continue to make videos, and I'm going to continue to, to do awesome stuff, but if I seem like I'm not as emotionally connected as I was, I'm really sorry. It, it probably is just the medication. Um, so that's a warning to everybody, but I think I've talked for kind of a while. So I'm going to go ahead and go. But uh, if you have any questions whatsoever, if you think that you might have it, if you just want to talk to me in regard to it or whatever, that's fine. But if you're going to come harass me about it, I'm probably just going to block you because I can't handle it. <laughs> so, all right. Have a really great day, guys, and I will talk to you real soon. Okay?